we will learn about the weight loss in chemical kinetics. There are three kinds of weight loss. The first one is the average rate loss. The second one is the differential rate loss. And the third one is the integrated rate loss. So the first rate law, as I said, is the average rate law. Basically, this rate law talks about the average rate of a reaction from start to finish. Consider a reaction, A combining with B, giving you the product C. And the stoichiometry of the reactions are small a, small b and small c. Because in the average rate law, the stoichiometry of the reaction is important. So the rate of the reaction is equal to as given there, 1 over A, change in concentration of A, divided by change in concentration of time, or it can be expressed in I, any of the reactant, either A or B, or it can be expressed in terms of the product also, which is written there as 1 over C, delta C over delta T. So this, actually, we don't know the rate of reaction at any point. We know it uh, we know the concentration in the beginning, we know the concentration at the end. The change in concentration and the time taken for the change in concentration gives me the rate. And it is important that we divide the equation by the stoichiometry, otherwise the rate cannot be equated. And note down, there is a negative sign in front of uh, the reactants A and B. And this is because concentration of A and B, the reactants, is decreasing and concentration of C the product is increasing. But when, as far as the rate is concerned, the value, we take the absolute value, it will be the positive only. The negative sign sh indicates the decrease in concentration. Let's just apply this to one reaction. As given there, nitrogen gas combines with uh, hydrogen gas to give you ammonia. So the rate of the reaction in terms of nitrogen will be change in concentration of nitrogen with change in concentration of time. And you see that this is divided by the stoichiometry, that's 1. And that's equal to the change in concentration with respect to hydrogen divided by delta T. And this is divided by 3. The reason is we have 3 hydrogens. And then the last one in terms of the product ammonia, we get delta NH3 divided by delta T. And you could see that that is divided by 2, indicating that uh, we have 2 as a stoichiometry for ammonia. So in case of average rate, it is very important that we have a negative signs in front of the reactants and the rates have to be divided by the stoichiometry of the reaction. Therefore, before even starting, remember to balance the equation. We just now saw the average rate law. Now we will focus on the second rate law called as the differential rate law. And the reaction we are going to consider is AA giving you CC. A is the small a and small c are the stoichiometry of the reaction. A is the reactant and C is product. So the rate of this reaction is defined as rate equals K, concentration of A, raised the power of X. Compare it with the differential rate law given below. That says rate equals 1 over A, change in concentration of A divided by T equals 1 over C, con change in concentration of C, divided by concentration of T. So, let us just understand this differential rate law. So, in this case, the, the letter K, we call it as the rate constant, and A is the reactant, and X given there is called as the order of the reaction, and X can be determined only by experiment. It has nothing to do with the A and the C given over here. This is an important point. A and C are the stoichiometry of the reaction and X is called as the order of the reaction and we can determine the order only experimentally. And K is the rate of the rate constant and it takes different units depending on the order of the reaction. If you look at the table over there, the first one, the rate equals Ka raised to the power of 0. That means the order of the reaction is 0. And the unit of K is mole, liter inverse, second inverse. Same way, as the order becomes 1, the unit of K changes to sec 1, sec inverse 1, or second inverse 1. And for a second order reaction, the unit of K changes to liter, mole inverse, second inverse. So, sometime in the questions, the unit of K will be given. From that, we can get the order of the reaction. 
or sometimes the order of the reaction will be given and they can ask you to find out the unit of K. We will focus on the third uh, rate law called as the integrated rate law and consider the same reaction A, A giving you C, C. A is a reactant, C is the product and as you know A and C are the stoichiometry of the reaction. Before we get into the integrated rate law, we will just uh, write down the differential rate laws for uh, three orders 0, 1 and 2. The first differential rate law is rate equals K concentration of A0. And we know rate is from the average rate law, rate is equal to change in concentration with respect to change in time. And uh, if the order is 0, it will become negative dA over dt equals K. And uh, the D is there because for small changes, I can use the differential equation. So, the differential rate law becomes dA over dt for, for equals K for 0 order. And it becomes equal to dA over dt equals ka for my first order. And uh, dA over dt equals ka to the power of 2 for second order reaction. So now after doing the differential rate law, we will take this and integrate it from a concentration of A equals 0 to a concentration of A at a time t. So when you integrate it, the equation becomes concentration of A over t equals concentration of A over Z, uh, A is at time Z, uh, 0 minus KT. Or concentration of A at T is equal to concentration of A at 0 minus KT. You don't have to know uh, how to integrate it or even you don't even have to memorize all these equations. But it's good to know that what is the first uh, zero order integrated uh, rate law and what is the first order integrated rate law and so on. The second order integrated rate law, if you look at it, it's um, ln A at time t equals ln A at time 0 minus kt. And the third uh, integrate, uh, the second order integrated rate law is 1 A O t equals kt plus 1 A 0. So we have the three integrated rate laws, 0, 1 and 2. And uh, look at the integrated rate law uh, for 0. It is of the form y equals mx plus b. So, it's the equation of a straight line. So, a plot of concentration of A versus T will give you a negative slope. Similarly, for a first order reaction, a plot of ln concentration of A versus T gives you a straight line with a negative slope. And for a second order reaction, a plot of 1 over concentration of A versus T will give you a straight line with a positive slope. It is necessary that you need to know what is to be plotted for each order to get the straight line. Because sometimes just the plot will be given, you should be asked to find out what is the order of the reaction. So from the straight line, I can get the slope and the intercept. The slope for the zero order reaction gives the value of K and the intercept gives me the value of the concentration at zero time. Similarly, for a uh, first order reaction, I get the value of K and the intercept gives me the value of ln concentration of A at time 0. And for a second order reaction, it has a positive slope and K can be directly gotten from the slope. And uh, the intercept is the value of 1 over concentration of A0. So from the intercept for all these order reactions, we can get the value of concentration of A at the time. 0. And as we have learnt before also, units of K depends on uh, the order of the reaction. We have repeated the units of K again and it is uh, necessary that you know the units of K because this is also helpful in determining the order of the reaction. So, apart from the order of the reaction, rate of the reaction, we have something called as T half. T half is the time required for half of the reaction to complete because sometimes the reaction rate uh, uh, it will take uh, for a reaction to complete it will take such a long time we need to know what happens in the middle so for that we take the half of the T half so this is T half is a time when the concentration a half of the reaction is proceeded so substituting the values you don't have to know the uh, derivation of it 
the T hat for a zero order reaction becomes concentration of A at zero divided by 2K and the, uh, the T hat for a first order reaction becomes 0 0.693 divided by K and for a second order reaction it is 1 over K concentration of A at time zero and any of the formula given there you don't have to memorize them but the one thing I want you to know will be what is to be plotted for each one of the order, each of the order of the reaction, and the units of K. It'll be helpful when you are uh, doing any question. So basically, this video summed up uh, the three rate laws: the average rate law, integrated rate law, and the differential rate law. And most of the time, we will be doing questions on differential rate laws and integrated rate laws, which we will see in the next video.